Hello and welcome back to our DSA playlist. In today's video, we'll see the implementation of stacks using linked list, wherein which a linked list is created and just the head pointer of the linked list, which is pointing to the first node of it, is replaced with the top of the stack. Thus, we can say that it will represent a stack and we can perform the operations like push operation, pop operation, or peak operation onto that particular linked list, which is representing the stack. At first, we'll take the overview of linked list representation of stack. Now highlighting upon the drawback of using arrays for implementing stack is that arrays of fixed size due to which there is always a chance that the stack would get overflow. What it means is that the maximum number of elements within the stack possible are already pushed into the stack due to which it get full and under such cases we can't update the top anymore and no any further element can be pushed into that particular stack. So we can say that it is stack overflow condition. This is one of the drawback of using arrays for implementing stack and under such cases we can shift towards linked list representation of stack. Next point would be that the storage requirement for a linked list representation is big O of n for n number of elements. Let's say there are n number of elements within the stack then we'll require O of n space for the same. Again there are various operations which are performed onto the stack like push operation, pop operation and peak operation as well. And the time complexity for all three of these uh, when we represent a stack using linked list is big O of 1. We'll see how exactly it is in the further part as we continue. Now we will take a look at the visualization of how do we use a linked list for representing a stack. At first as we can see there is an empty stack. So uh, while using linked list we just need to create up a particular node and as we have the head pointer which is pointing to the first node within the linked list we'll just replace it with the top of the stack. So we have created a node and let's say the address of the node is 2000 and the data part of the node is 100 and the next part of the node is the pointer to the next node. However, as we have only one node created right now, so uh, we'll point uh, the pointer part to null and then we'll create a, uh, the head pointer which uh, in terms of stack we call it as the top of the stack and this top of the stack will point to the first element within the stack which is nothing but the uh, one node which we have created right now. So the linked list representation will be like this. Now in order to add any of the element to that particular stack, as we know that it uh, uses the LIFO that is last in first out operation. So under such cases, the last element to enter is the first element to move out. So to again extend that particular stack or uh, in order to add the element uh, to that particular stack, we use the push operation. And whenever we push a particular element onto the stack, then it is added at the top of the stack. So hence we need to update the top pointer eventually. At first the stack is like this and now to update the status of the stack uh, we are adding up a node to hit. So let's say I have created a node and the data part of the node is storing 99 and the address part will point to the previously created node that we have. Now it is pointing to 2000 which was the address for the uh, first node that we have created. Now that we have uh, formed this particular linked list, we just need to update the top as we have added the node at the beginning of the linked list. Eventually uh, as we know that uh, whenever we push an element into the stack it has to be pushed at the topmost position. So in terms of linked list we will say that uh, we will add a node at the beginning of this linked list. So we need to update the head pointer which we call as the top pointer here. And once we update it, let's say that the address for this newly created node is 4800, then the top will be pointing to this newly created node. And accordingly, we have this particular linked list over here. And let's say again, I need to add another element to it. So in that case, I have added an uh, element in the form of a node. So once we create a, another node, we'll just link it to the original linked list that we have through the pointer part that the newly created node will have. Now the newly created node has the address of uh, 5000 and will just update the top accordingly. So now the top will be 5000 which will be pointing to the newly created node that we have as we are going to add the node at the beginning of the stack or at the beginning of the linked list we can say. So this is how we can use linked list for representing a stack and in order to perform the pop operation or to remove an element uh, from the stack we know that the element has to be uh, removed uh, in last in first out manner which means that the last element to be added has to be removed first. So we'll remove the element from the top of the stack and once we remove any element from the top of the stack, we'll update the top accordingly. We'll just point it to the next element within the linked list. 
and thus we can see that this is how the stack can be represented using linked list. Now we'll take a look at the operations which are performed onto those stack. So the first operation will be push operation. There are other operations like pop operation and peak operations which we'll see further. The push operation nothing but means inserting an element into the stack or adding an element into that particular stack which has to be added at the topmost position as we have already discussed it how exactly to do so. So at first we need to check whether the top is null or not. If it's null which means that the stack is empty and under such cases we need to create up a node and the next part of the node or the address part of the node will point to null as it's a single node and the data part of the same will store the actual data that the user want to be stored in that particular stack. The new node that we have created will be the top of the stack. As of now we have only one element into the stack. Now again we'll check whether the top is null or not. If it's not null then in that case we'll just add the element at the beginning of the linked list as we have already seen how to do so. So similar thing we need to repeat and under such cases we will update the stack accordingly and the top value will also go on updating. So uh, we'll have a quick visualization of the same through an example here. Let's say right now I have one element within the stack and it is 10 and uh, as we have only single node so the uh, address part of that particular node is pointing to null. Now this is our original top. Now let's say if I'm adding or pushing an element into the stack then in that case I'll update the top accordingly. I have created a node which has 20 as the data part and then the address will point to the original node that we have previously and accordingly we'll update the top value which will point to the newly created node right now. Now the next operation which we can perform onto a stack is pop operation which means we can remove or delete an element from the stack. Again it has to be deleted from the top position itself. So the process that we need to follow for the same is as follows. At first we need to check whether the top is null or not which means whether the stack is empty or not. If the stack is empty then in that case we can't perform the pop operation otherwise it will lead to the underflow condition that is the stack will be underflow as it doesn't have any elements into it and the top is pointing to null then in that case we can't remove the element from an empty stack so it leads to stack underflow condition but if this top is not null then in that case we can say that the stack will have a certain number of elements in it so in that case we can perform the pop operation onto such stack in order to do so as we are going by the linked list representation so we need to just delete the node at the beginning of the linked list and accordingly we need to update the top pointer which will point to the next node within that linked list or the adjacent node to the node that we have deleted right now. So we can take a quick example for the same. Here we are given with a linked list which consists of four nodes in it and we can say that in terms of stack there are four elements in it and the top is nothing but 90. In that case if we are trying to use the pop operation then it will just delete the node at the beginning and it will delete this particular node which is over here and accordingly it will update the top which will point to the next adjacent node to the node which we have deleted right now. So once we delete the node from the beginning of the linked list we can see that the linked list will now look like this one and now we need to update the top value. So the new top will point to the adjacent node that was there that is 100. So this is how we perform the pop operation wherein which a node is deleted from the beginning of the linked list and accordingly the adjacent node to that particular node that we have deleted will be the new top of that particular stack. Another operation which we can perform onto a stack is a peak operation which returns the top element of the stack without deleting it. The process we need to follow for the same is that at first we need to check whether the stack is empty or not that is if the top is equals to null then we can say that the stack is empty and under such cases peak operation will print the same that the top is equals to null that's why the stack is empty. However if the top is not null then it means that there are certain number of elements within the stack. So in that case it will return the data part of the first node or the top node. So if we take the quick example over here then we can see that there is a linked list which consists of three nodes here. And in terms of stack, we can say that a stack is having three number of elements and the top element is 100. So the peak operation should return me the data part of the node which is at the beginning of the linked list. So the top is pointing to the first node and the data part of the first node is nothing but 100. So the peak operation should return me 100. Or in terms of stack, we can say that 100 is the first element within the stack which is the top element. So it has to be returned through the peak operation.
thus the peak operation will give us the top element within the stack and this was about all the operations which we can perform onto a stack the first one was the push operation next one was the pop operation and the third one was the peak operation now we'll take a look at the coding part of the same where in which we'll try to implement all of these operations in the form of functions and see the overall implementation of stack using linked list now let's take a look at the actual implementation of stack with the help of linked list so at first we'll write here the include statement uh, where in which we'll include the necessary library so we'll write down here the include statement then stdc++ h after which we'll write down here using namespace std now that we are going to use linked list uh, for the implementation of stack so in under such cases we know that we need to declare a particular structure and that structure is named as node and within that particular node there are two parts that is the first part is the data and the next part is the pointer to the next node so we'll write down here the struct keyword and declare a structure that is node within which we'll have the first part as the integer data and then uh, the next part is nothing but a structure pointer uh, this particular part of code is similar to that of uh, the linked list implementation as uh, we are going to create a node of the linked list so we'll write down here again struct keyword then node star and we'll uh, name the pointer as link it is nothing but a structure pointer which is going to point to the next node within that particular linked list and here completes the definition of the structure after which we'll declare a global pointer which is again a structure pointer uh, in terms of a simple linked list we call it as the head pointer however as we are going to implement this stack so we know that uh, the top element of the stack is nothing but termed as top so we'll write down here struct node star top uh, which is nothing but representing the head pointer in terms of simple linked list implementa implementation now before going towards the main function uh, we'll at first write down the functions for different operations onto the stack that is the push operation then pop operation then peak operation and we'll also display the function uh, display that the contents within that particular stack using the display function and then eventually we'll write down the main function wherein which we'll in, uh, use these operations or these particular functions which we have defined uh, in order to form our stack and also display its data so at first we'll define the push function here and we know what exactly is the work of the push function so we'll just pass the data as the parameter because we need to push that particular data into the stack so user will enter a certain data and it it is passed as a parameter for the push function so at first we'll declare a struct pointer uh, we are nothing uh, we are just creating a node so we we'll write down here struct node star 10 and eventually we'll create up a temp node and this particular node has to be linked with the actual uh, link list in order to form the stack now temp is equals to new node we are going to use new keyword here after which we just need to check whether that particular node has been created if the temp node is not created under such cases element can't be inserted in that particular stack so we'll write down here if statement and if not of temp then under such cases we are uh, not able to insert the element into the stack so we'll write down here see out statement and then we'll write here unable to insert the element the element in the stack and then we'll write down here exit one exit with the status one now if uh, this is not the case and the temp node is created then we need to link that particular node with the link list that we have uh, within that particular stack so under such cases we'll write down that temp arrow data that is the data part of the temp will con uh, will consist of the data that is passed as a parameter by the user and then the next part is of the link and as we know that the push operation is used to basically push that particular element within the stack and we need to update the top pointer so under such cases we know that uh, whenever we push a particular element using link list uh, if we are going to implement uh, that particular stack then we need to add a node at the beginning of the link list so we are uh, following the same procedure we need to add this particular temp node at the beginning of the link list so we'll write down here temp arrow link equals to the original top that is there so we'll link it to the original top and once it is added then we'll update the top and we'll write down top equals to temp 
so our new top is nothing but the temp node which is added at the beginning of the linked list and here completes the push function now uh, at times we need to check whether the stack is empty or not so it is better to write a particular function for the same rather than repeating the same piece of code a uh, multiple number of times so we'll declare here uh, the is empty function and define it as well so we'll write here int is empty and within that particular function if the stack is empty then we know that it has to return the top equals to null so the same thing we are going to write here that is return top equals to equals to null and this is nothing but our is empty function so whenever the stack is empty then the top is nothing but null and after the is empty function we'll write down the peak function so in the peak function we'll write down here int peak we know that the peak function returns the data stored in the top node that is um, the top element is returned in that particular stack so here at first uh, we'll check whether the stack is empty or not so if that stack is not empty so we'll call here the is empty function and we'll write down the not operator so if not of is empty then in that case it has to return top of data and if the stack is empty then uh, in the else part we'll write down exit set uh, status one so if the stack is not empty then it has to return that particular data uh, within the top and if it's empty then it, it simply will give us the exit status one now after the peak function we'll define the pop function so we'll write down here void pop and within the pop function we know that it is the function which uh, pops the top element from the stack and update the top value that is in terms of linked list we can say that it removes the node at the beginning of the linked list and the new top will be the adjacent node to the previous one that is uh, the node that we have removed right now has a particular link with the next node and that next node becomes the new top so for which we'll declare a struct pointer here that is the temp so we'll write down here struct node star temp now we need to check whether this stack is empty or not if the stack is empty then in that case pop will be invalid and we can't pop that uh, any of the element from the stack as there is no any element in it so in that case we'll check whether the top is equals to equals to null and if it's the case then in that case the stack will be empty and we'll see out backslash n stack underflow so whenever a stack is empty then it is termed as stack underflow because we can't remove an element from the stack so then end l and again we'll write here exit one after which if the stack is not empty that is there are certain elements within the stack so in that case we need to eliminate uh, the first node within the linked list or the top node and we need to update that particular top so for which we'll write here the else part and uh, within the else part we'll define temp equals to top now once we write down temp equals to top then after which we'll write here top equals to top arrow link that is we'll update the top value the previous node is deleted or the node at the beginning is deleted and will uh, will point that particular top to the next element and then we'll write down temp arrow link equals to null and once it points to null then we can free the memory that we have allocated to it so we'll write down here free temp here completes our pop function now we'll define the display function to display the elements within the stack so we'll write here void display it is same as that of displaying the data part of the nodes within the linked list so in it we'll define a struct pointer and it will be temp which we'll be using to traverse through each node within the linked list and eventually we'll print their data parts so at first we'll check whether the stack is empty or not so if top equals to equals to null then in that case the stack is empty so we'll write a cout statement here and we'll print stack is 
empty and then exit 1 now if the stack is not empty then there is certain data within the stack so we need to print that particular data so for which we'll write here in the else part temp equals to top that is uh, we'll be starting from the first element or the top element and uh, we'll go on while the temp is not equals to null so we'll write a see out statement here and we'll print the data part of the temp node so and we'll also write an arrow here to indicate the link and once we do so then we'll update the temp value that is temp will point to the next node so we'll write here temp equals to temp arrow link and this completes our display function which, uh, which will display the data within the stack after the display function we'll focus on the main function right now as we have defined the functions for each operations which are possible onto a particular stack so right now let's define the main function so within the main function we'll be using all these functions that we have defined till now and perform all these operations so at first we need to create up the stack so we'll write here push operation uh, so we'll call the push function and we'll push a certain data within the stack so let's say if i'm pushing 11 into it then again we can write a push statement on uh, push 10 then we can again push 20 into it then push 30 so right now our stack is having four elements in it now let's try to display it so we'll write a display function here and once we call the display function it will display me the current status of the stack and uh, what all elements are present into it after which uh, let's say if i want to print the top element so we'll write here see out statement then top element is we'll call the peak function here uh, as it will return me the top elements value so we'll call the peak function and we'll write in l for the new line after which uh, now let's test the pop operation so we'll call the pop function here let's say if i want to pop twice then we can call it once again after which uh, we need to see the updated stack so we'll again call the display function here now after the display function if i again want to display the top element so we'll write a see out statement here then the top element is again call the peak function as it will return me the top elements value now that we have tested all the operations so we can simply write return statement here return zero now we'll save the code and we'll try to run it so now we can see that initially we have pushed four elements into it so we can see all these four elements uh, now the top element is 30 as it was pushed at last so at first we have pushed 11 so 11 is here then we push 10 so 10 is here then we push 20 so 20 is here and at last we push 30 so 30 is the top element so it has written me the top element as 30 which we can see over here now we are using pop operation two times so it will pop the first two elements within the stack and now the remaining stack will be 10 and 11 which we can see over here so after using pop operation two times uh, we are left with these two elements that is 10 and 11 and now we are again printing the top element using the peak function so it will return me the top element as 10 which is here so this is how we can get the output and we can create a stack using linked list and perform all these operations onto that particular stack i hope you have understood how to implement stack with the help of linked list thank you for watching